Nomad, Secret Empire, Captain America Doppelgangers. All these stories can be found in this omnibus, so join me for an advanced look at the Captain America Omnibus Volume 3 from Marvel. And welcome back all you mentees. Big thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on July 28th. And speaking of direct market, that's what we're looking at here. This is the cover to the direct market. To your left is the cover to the standard edition. Again, the direct market cover is only available at places like your local comic book shop, cheapgraphicnovels.com, Tales of Wonder, Dime Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, In Stock Trades, and other online retailers that deal in the direct market. What we're looking at here is the Captain America Volume 3. So we kicked it off with the Silver Age Volume 1 and 2, and now we're getting into the Bronze Age. Now, I've been getting these in epic format because I got rid of my Captain America Omnis a long time ago, and I know that probably sounds blasphemous to a lot of you. But here it finally is, a Volume 3, which puts this book perfectly between Volumes 2 and the Jack Kirby Omnibus. So we'll look at that here in a second, but let's look at the spine. So this is the design of the newer spines that they were doing for a lot of the Silver Age books. However, this is one that is from the Bronze Age, so perhaps they're just doing it until you get to the Jack Kirby Omnibus, which is the one that follows this up. So I'm not sure if they're reprinting Volumes 1 and 2 of the Silver Age Captain America, but they are reprinting the Golden Age stuff. So the Golden Age looks like that. So maybe they're just keeping it to the Silver Age for this type of design. As far as the back of the book, here are all the covers, man, and they really put them in there. With the big font down here, Steve Englehart and Sal Buscema. So this is mainly Steve Englehart and Sal Buscema's story. Uh, the price of the book is $125, and it tells you what it collects down here. However, that's not everything. There's a giant size cap in here. All right, under the dust jacket... I really do like this, because they did the same thing with the Fantastic Four, uh, where we have the classic logo here. The spine is identical to the spine of the dust jacket, including the picture down there of the classic doppelganger cap. And I'll talk a little bit about who that is uh, when I get in there. Uh, volume number, all the creators and Captain America. And then, yes, where the Fantastic Four had the FF, Cap has the shield. I like that. Just wish this was bigger font, including the creators. Now, it could be my eyesight, you know, getting older, but those are just my two cents. Let's go ahead and get this open. For the first time ever, we have this collection available in omnibus format. I know this makes a lot of people happy. So, we have one continuous run of Captain America from his adventures in Tales of Suspense all the way up until the, Jack Kirk, the end of Jack Kirby's run. So, here we are. With Steve Englehart, Steve, on Kenny Omar Talk Pretty One Day. Uh, Steve Englehart's classic stories, and I mean classics. This is the stuff that a lot of people still talk about. So here we have the credits. Again, Steve Englehart being the big, big writer of the book. We also have a few other writers like Jerry Conway, who kind of finishes out his run. So we only have about four issues of his stories in here. Uh, Steve Gerber, Roy Thomas, Marf Wolfman, who does the one shot in between uh, the final issue and the new Jack Kirby run that will start with the next omnibus. Of course, Sal Buscema being the main artist, but Frank Robbins does come in and you can kind of tell when he comes in uh, because of the letter pages. And then all your inkers, letters, colorist. I do love that they add these things now. Captain America created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. The table of contents, letting you know what to find in here. And from looking at it for all you Marvel Masterworks folks, you know that what they did was put three of the Marvel Masterworks together. So volumes seven, eight, and nine, I believe, of the Marvel Masterworks are what is in here, including all the wonderful introductions. I love reading these from Steve Englehart. All three of them are in here, just reminiscent about the time uh, that he got chosen to write Captain America. So it all kicks off with issue 149 of Captain America. So this does contain issues 149 to 192, uh, the material from Giant Size Captain America number one, and then Foom number eight, material from Foom number eight. So as I was saying, this ends Jerry Conway's run on the book. So what made Steve Englehart come in? Why did they choose this new guy that hadn't really written any ongoing series uh, to come in and take a chance with him to write Captain America? Well, that is all due to Roy Thomas, the wonderful editor and also one of the best writers of all time. Uh, 
it was his decision to let them try out somebody like Steve Englehart because this, the book was going to get canceled. Much like the X-Men books that were, well, those were canceled. Uh, they took a chance on Lan Wein and Dave Cockrum to do Giant Size Number 1. They figured, yeah, we'll let some new blood handle this if it sells. You know, it sells. If it doesn't, we'll cancel the book. Fire Steve Englehart. His words, I swear. It's, it's, I love reading the behind the scenes. So he took on the book. And the very first story arc. So, yes, we have him fighting Batrick here. We do have Falcon. Falcon finally, how do I say it? Gets his wings in this volume. Um, but the main story arc that kicks it off is this classic story that is a bit of a retcon with issue 153. So we have another Captain America running around here. So the purpose of the story, again, Roy Thomas's idea, but he let Steve Englehart write it, was to retcon the 50s Captain America and Bucky. So we all know the classic story. Captain America was frozen in ice and then eventually came back to the Marvel age in Avengers number four. Right. But that really didn't ever happen. Captain America never really went into ice. That was just something that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby decided to do as a way to bring him back. There was never a story where Captain America sacrificed himself, put himself in ice, or anything like that, as, like, the movie The First Avenger showed. The comic continued. Even after World War II, they brought it back. It just lasted, like, a few issues, but it did have some amazing John Romita artwork. Um, but Captain America himself was different. He was still Steve Rogers, but he was going after communists. It was a, it was a different time in the 50s. So after that series got canceled, they brought him back. So they had to explain why there was a Captain America in the 50s if he really was frozen in ice in World War II. So that's what this storyline's about. And like I said, this does have some retcons. The coolest thing about this, though, that I really enjoyed, yeah, let me see if I can find a couple pages, are during the explanation of the Captain America from the 50s, you can find out for yourself if you've never read it, they put in the classic John Romita art in there. So it tells you right here, these stories originally took place in Young Men Comics number 24 from 1953. So that's cool that they put those in here. And then, of course, you have Sal Buscema's art. Now, one of the things that I've noticed um, is this right here. So I assume this happened in the Masterworks, too, because I don't remember this. I used to have some of these original comics that were beat to hell, but they were still uh, original comics to me. But yeah, so I get it. Uh, so Steve Rogers and Sharon Carter were hanging out in the Caribbean, right? So they're going to they got a little sunburned, and I think that's what they added. Because I don't remember them being sunburned in my original comics. Of course, they were so crappy and outdated uh, that could have been the color was off on them. So if you did have them, let me know in the comments down below if this is the way they look. Because they look like they're pink right here. Lobster pink. So that could be a way, honestly, to differentiate between the two Captain Americas whenever they're fighting in this classic issue right here. So the real Steve Rogers, right? Sunburn. Fake Steve Rogers. Pell White. Maybe that's why they did it. Anyway, I thought this was a really cool way to get Steve Englehart's stories uh, going. Uh, and then there's other characters that show up through here. You're going to see the Serpent, Society, or Serpent Squad. Uh, Nick Fury. You're going to see the return of a love interest that's going to put a wrench into the relationship between Captain America and Sharon Carter. Of course, it, it was a little bit different then. Uh, because uh, I don't want to spoil it. Never mind. I was going to say that since then has been retconned. Oh, yes. You also have this awesome story introducing us to Nightshade. So I used to have this issue, issue 164. And the whole reason I bought it, found it at, uh, like I said, my favorite flea marketplace in Shelbyville, Kentucky, um, Dr. Comics, was because this character of Nightshade, who looks super sexy then, looked a lot different in the Mar um Mark Grunewald's run. Yeah, she was the one that was part of the whole uh, Cap Wolf storyline. So the character does come back. That is the same Nightshade that appears in the Cap Wolf story that I know a lot of people. Oh, wait. My goodness. All right. Uh, where the hell was I? Yes, she looks a lot different. She looks a lot different. But I always wanted this issue. And I remember buying the next issue in the hopes that she. She does come back later on. Um. I remember buying the next issue in the hopes that she would appear again, uh, but instead I got confused with the return of Sal Buscema. 
because the way that Nick Fury looks at the end of this issue and the way he appears in the next issue were completely different. And of course, this also helps set up the return of Yellow Claw. So that monster werewolf story, which is actually pretty fun, sets up the return of Yellow Claw. So for the most part, this is the type of artwork you're gonna get. You're gonna get Sal Buscema's art in here. And then we get to the classic stories. Oh, that's right, the X-Men show up here, along with the Banshee, who was a villain at the time. And as I said, Falcon finally getting his wings to fly, which took a long time because if you're going to call a character Falcon, you figured he could fly. Now, let's go back to this story right here, The Secret Empire. I didn't know until I read the introduction by Steve Englehart what this was really based on. So this was all really based on the Watergate scandal that was happening at the time. So, you know, Marvel has always been the world outside our windows. So it makes sense that he actually got a lot of inspiration from what was going on in the outside world. Now, I don't need to tell you that Steve Englehart saved the book because I'm pretty sure you know by now because you've read Captain America for the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or have just started reading Captain America that we still have a Captain America comic. And yes, I never got back to that point that Steve Englehart did end up bumping the cells up. What he did, and I appreciate that to this day, is take out the whole mythos of Captain America represents us going to war. You know, the, the, the image of Captain America punching Hitler, it's still there. But he needed to remove it because we were at a different time in America back then. The Vietnam War was going on and not a lot of Americans agreed with that. So what he wanted to do was put the spirit of America into Captain America instead of the spirit of the war, if that makes any sense. And it worked. It worked a lot because the book was saved. So Secret Empire is sort of like that, like where Captain America learns to not to trust the government. You can find out. It's got a rough ending in here, too. Um, and you can find out exactly what happens then. Now, that all leads to the gnome. Hey, the Golden Archer. Um, that all leads or it's the Golden Arrow to the Captain America nomad story where Captain America just gives up. He loses hope in America and gives up being Captain America. And somebody has to take on the mantle of Captain America. I just said the same thing yesterday when I was talking about the death of Captain America Omnibus. Um, yes, it's been going on for a long time. Sadly, this time it's this kid named Roscoe who was just a big fan and, well, never mind. But yeah, Captain America gave up the whole persona of Captain America. So much so it became kind of a Falcon book for a little while. Um, and then he, had, he got his own costume. He became this character known as Nomad. By the way, we also have the return of Lucifer, Professor Xavier's legs, worst enemy. But by the time Steve Rogers comes back, he comes back as Nomad with the cape and everything. So this changes a lot of things here. We're introduced to the Serpent Society, or Serpent Squad is what they were known as at the time. Now, one of the things you'll notice towards the end of the book is that we go from Sal Buscema's very dynamic style to Frank Robbins style who has more of a, I don't know, golden age kind of cartoony style. Kind of reminds me a lot more of the spirit, per se. And it is quite a change. I'm not saying he's a bad artist. As a matter of fact, it's funny that Steve Englehart talks about it. He, he kind of says the same thing. Says that he's not a bad artist. He just didn't think that it was a good fit for the book. Uh, but Frank Robbins does take over the book. We still have some fill-in art from time to time like Herb uh, Trempe does some of the fill-in artwork. We have a lot of returning villains in here, like I said, including the Serpent Squad. So, see what I mean? I mean, it works. I dig it. But going from somebody like Sal Buscema to that, it just feels a lot different. And, it, you know, we've, we've always complained about getting used to a particular artist. I remember the same thing happened in Guardians of the Galaxy, the DNA run, because we had a like, somebody with a realistic style and then somebody with a cartoony style would come in. So it does happen still to this day. All right, let's wrap this up. The book has 976 pages, again, retailing for $125. Let's look at the extras in the back. So here we have some extras. So I assume everything from here are the masters that they got from the marvel masterworks and of course the letter pages are all intact and then the extras are added so we have house ads we have uh, it's silver screen captain america there we have interviews 
the calendar art, and of course, original pages here from Big Sal. I almost said Big Sal Busema. That's his brother, Big John. Not going to showcase all. Oh my goodness, that's the one by Alan Weiss. Yeah, so Alan Weiss and Steve Englehart, uh, you know, they went on to do other projects like um, the uh, Master Kung Fu stuff. But that was the Nightshade page I was looking at. And here's some original Frank Robbins artwork. And then, of course, just you because you don't want to miss anything, you have the cover to the standard edition here by Ivan Coelho. And I never realized that the X-Men are added in the back. So is Black Panther. Black Panther appears um, a couple of issues, and so do the X-Men. Interesting that they were added in the back. All right. One thing I didn't say about this is that if you've never read this stuff, you know, one of the things that Marvel has been doing, and I'm glad they're doing this as long as they keep the dialogue the same, is... They put this thing at the beginning of each of these books telling you that this is a product of its time. Uh, there are some stereotypes you're going to find in here. As a matter of fact, Steve Englehart, in his introduction, talks about writing black characters. And, you know, there were a lot of things going on. There was a lot of progressive things that he was doing in the book. However, the dialogue will probably appear outdated to a lot of people that are used to reading current comics but this is the way it was written it is left intact nothing has been edited out as a matter of fact they made captain america extra pink uh to make sure that you knew that he was the real one and sunburn but i did want to point that out i love that it, everything's intact i'm not a fan when you know censorship happens because i think the books need to be released in the way they were originally released when they came out but I think I've gone over everything. Oh, no, I haven't. Let's look at the binding. It is sewn binding, and there is that eye. This book is printed at the Donnelly printer, for those of you wondering. Now I've gone over everything. Not really any spread pages, just mainly a bunch of splash pages. Bunch of action in here. Some of the best Captain America stories that people talk about to this day. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up, if you've never read any of these stories, if you can't wait to own this, to put it between your Captain America Omnibus Volume 2 and your Captain America by Jack Kirby. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We have a Patreon, and we are on Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.